beautiful, isn't it? I've come to this seaside village called Saundersfoot in South Wales, but I haven't actually come here to Rockpool or get my feet wet. I've actually come here, of course, for a barn find car. And the car in question is a German car, a BMW Coupe that in its prime was an extremely expensive, exclusive car. And this was before the days of M Sport were even a thing. And the car in the garage somewhere up there in the village has been there for quite a long time. In fact, the guy bought it years and years ago, nearly 40 years ago, and only drove it for a few months before putting it away. So hopefully, with a friend that I know who's quite partial to BMWs, we might be able to get it out and fire it up. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to The Late Break Show. This episode is proudly supported by WD40. So Gore, uh, first question is, this car, how long have you had this car? I bought the car in 1985, Johnny. Okay, a long time ago. A long time ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you drove it for how long? Only a few months. Really? A few months. And then the MOT came up. Yeah. And I took it to the local BMW uh, shop and they told me 95 quid to get it through the MOT. Yeah. So I said, carry on. And in the morning I got a phone call and they said the, the damage was worse than, the rust was worse than what they expected. Right. And it was going to be 495. Well, I'd, I'd only paid 400 for the car. <laughs> and, and that cleared me out as well, that 400, you know, cleared me out. So I didn't have a lot left. I didn't earn a lot in a, in a few months. Yeah. So I went and parked it in my in my dad's garage, and it stayed there ever since up until I got it transported to here. Okay, so you, this car hasn't always lived in Wales, and neither of you. It's been. You here. don't sound Welsh. No, I'm not Welsh. <laughs> so I'm from West London, and it's been here, I think, about seven years now. Right. So it's parked in here, and it was in the it was in your dad's garage since '85. Yes. Goodness. So it's yes. just sat and sat and just sat. Just sat and sat and sat. So did you, have you driven it at all in that time? It's, it's not been on the road? It's not been on the road. But you've driven it or not? I've driven it in, in, uh, in small private areas. I've driven it back and forth. Not here we had to, we had to drive it off the, off the um, trailer yeah. and I had to reverse it in here. And I've, I've driven it in this little estate at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Just to check that it actually Just runs. to check that it was still working. And every now and then, I try and come and start it to see yeah. whether it's still working. So what, how did you find the car? Where, where did the car come from? So I bought the car off an armed detective who worked at Scotland Yard. Okay. He collected classic cars and, and, and motorbikes and stuff. And he seemed quite wealthy. He had a, he had a very big house in Gerard's Cross and he had three beautiful daughters and I was going out with one of one of the daughters. Okay. And she liked I liked the car, she liked the car, and he decided to sell it and I managed to buy it off him. What year is it? Nineteen seventy? It's a nineteen seventy car. So it it actually wasn't really a classic probably by eighty five. It was an older car, but not a classic car, perhaps. But it was certainly an older car, yeah. It was like fifteen years old when I when I bought it. Yeah. Can, so can we have a look? Of course we can. Good, let's go on, show me, because uh because the Okay, there oh, we go. Wow. wow. It's like a peachy orange. Yes. Faded. It's, uh, it's called Colorado. Is it? That's the double O two is the Color code. Before we get too excited about the car, how did you arrive in Wales? What, what brought you here seven or eight years ago? Well, because I'd kept the car for so long. Yeah. I, my, I always wanted to get it back on the road. I always wanted to save up enough to repair the, the rust yeah. and 
have it as a daily driver, really, yeah. because it's such a lovely car. Yeah. But every time I got any money, it poured out elsewhere. Yeah. And few people tried to buy it off me. They knew I, they found out I had it. And I had people from the BMW club came once or twice to, to see it. I don't know how they knew. I wasn't selling it. I wasn't advertising it. Yeah. So, yeah, I decided, no, I am going to keep it. And I'm going to try and save up, get enough money yeah. to at least get it back to like a basic... Usable condition. Usable condition that would be safe to drive. Yeah, yeah. So you left London, or you, your, your father passed away? Yes. And the garage was the in your dad's? property down. all got sold. Yeah. So that meant the garage had to go. Yeah. So you decided you were going to leave London, or that wasn't the... Well, I, th I decided I wanted to go travelling. London storage was far too expensive. So I just googled 21 foot by 10 foot. <laughs> and the first thing that really came up was picture of this garage door yeah and and it was in wales in saunsford so so you'd never been to this part of wales before i'd never been to this part of wales before ever no so you put all your belongings in here Stashed with the bmw it. that you dragged yes. from london and never never used since 1985 yes and then went right i'm gonna go traveling yes and then what as i as i bought this garage yeah as i was buying that i thought i might get gazumped yeah and I was checking on the web page to see whether or not it was sold or under offer or... Yeah. And I happened to see next to that advertisement was a front door, which I somehow seemed to recognise. And it was for six months short term rent. And it happened to be uh, just in this block. A flat flats, just there. Exactly right here. Right. And that, I thought, yeah, well, if I can get that flat, and this garage, I'll have six months in order to, I haven't got a rush. Yeah. And I don't like to rush things, so. <laughs> so uh, but during the six months while I was doing all that, I yeah. sort of fell in love with the area and, and, and the people of Saundersford and the beaches and, and all the tourists, everyone seems happy. Yeah. It's a lovely, lovely little it's, place. It is charming. Is your plan to, to resurrect this car? You've had it all this time. That is the plan. Because yeah. it came off the road 40 years ago because of rust. 1985. So, so it won't have got any better? No, it's got far worse. <laughs> right, OK. Yeah. Right. It's got far, far worse. But, but it, it is becoming a valuable car. It could actually be worth oh, my while well, to bring it back to the road. Yeah, yeah. And it should hold its value. Yeah. If that was no, I, if I, ever possible. No, I agree. And I've actually brought a friend of mine along um, who's been on various barn finds with me, always BMW themed called Tony BMW, that's not his real name. Yeah, he's and, uh, and so he's gonna be um, popping over and helping me uncover the car, having a look around it, and maybe, maybe, seeing if we can fire it up and get it out in the Welsh sunshine today. Now, regular viewers of the Late Break Show Barn Finds will know who this man is. Go on in. This is Tony BMW, who comes with me on BMW-related Barn Finds, because he knows a lot more than I do. And this is a long way, we, we, we've both traveled an exceedingly long way to get to, um, to Gore's E9 here, you have come, you drove nine hours, nine hours yesterday. yesterday. Nine yeah. hours. Let's start pulling these um, carpets off to have a look at this particular car. Everybody knows about the CSL, the yeah. three litre CSL. Yeah, the lightweight version. Which this was, um, was born out of this. Yes, yeah, yeah. The, this, was the, this was the very first one. The, two eight, the 2800 CS, the carburetor model. Yeah. Sort of from 1968 to 1975, I think the, the E9 they're called, the, the E9. classified, yeah. And so this this came after the 2000 yes. CS, which yes. was the first big coupe that BMW yeah. built, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And before we start delving in, it's worth mentioning that even when they've been well looked after, they still used to like rotting. Yes. Yeah. You've this restored a, one. Of them. Yeah, there's a, this generation of car, this era of BMW, they, they do rot really badly. Yeah. So when I told you about this, you were quite excited because I said it's a factory right-hand drive, 2800 CS, auto, so the auto makes it less sporting, but it probably makes it a rarer car. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll be so beautiful to drive as well. Pillarless coupe, all the windows down, automatic. Uh, I bet it was an absolute beautiful thing to drive. Yeah, I think what I think they are, they are the Talbot Berlin bullet mirrors. Yeah, yeah. They are really valuable yep. mirrors. Yep. So I'm already seeing um, top of the wings, bottom of the windscreen. Yeah, corners. the wings hey. down this side, it's pretty shot. Yeah. 
I think both the wings are nasty, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, all and the way along They're there. expensive on these, the wings. Are they? Yeah, very. We'll have a look because the bonnet opens this away, doesn't it? We'll yeah. have a, just have a quick look. Come around and have a look. It's all there anyway. It is all there. I was yeah. just about to say Thomason. that. This was the start of BMW going on to sort of become world domination yeah. in terms of driver's cars, but also remember the CSL version of this, the homologation version of this car was built to conquer touring car. Yeah, well, the Batmobile. The Bat so that went on and uh, that was very successful in uh, touring cars. And that is the original M car, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 But anyway, we're not talking about M's today <laughs> because this is not M. But it is complete. It does look it? it. Yeah. yeah. But I've brought you along in the hope that we can Get we it can try, again. And try and run this car up. No pressure, Tony. No. Absolutely no pressure. We'll give it our best shot for sure. But if you've seen, I'll put a link above my head now if you haven't, the first time that Tony um, came along to a, to a shoot, which was that amazing South African, South African lightweight, lightweight car, which is a rare unicorn BMW. So Gore said that the carpets he put on because the ga although the garage had had a new roof, it used to occasionally leak. Mm, or condensation or something, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, hopefully the sea air hasn't, hasn't got to it too badly. Look at this. Look at that. Such a chunky badge. It's so complete, isn't it, the back end? Yeah, the automatic script. Gore lost the keys for this car, um, which meant that he, the car was open, the cabin was open, but being a, being a separate boot, he had to actually end up drilling out the lock for the boot, so he needs to buy a new barrel. It's probably not the biggest problem. No, no, it's not straightforward enough to swap over. But let's have a look, should we get in here? Well, that's good, it's not full of parts anyway. No, and it's not full of damp. Yeah, they're the sill covers Self and finishes. the trims that he's taken off, obviously for the for the MOT inspection. He's taken these car the carpets out, hasn't he, of the yes, footwells yeah, to inspect yeah. the rot. Yep. It, the boot floor and the fuel tank look good, but the rear valance and the rear corners, the rear lower corners, yeah. they're rotten. Yeah, same on this side. Yeah. A bit round the arches, but I've definitely seen worse. Right. So, what's the plan? to try and fire up the straight six what do we think let's run some checks i presume yeah so normally get the air cleaner off check there's nothing in the carburetor plugs out yeah spray down the bores check it'll t turn over as well if we can get a spanner on the crank or turn it over on the on the front pulley this is a distributor with points so we'll check those that probably probably need attention yeah one of the areas for concern is uh, gore had mentioned the last time they had it running three or four years ago but the last time he came to it this transistor started smoking so right. i'm a little bit nervous about that i'm hoping it's just being dirty connect dirty connector or something like yeah. that dirty connections yeah yeah okay um, okay fingers crossed and then we'll bypass the fuel tank we will indeed. later on yes. yeah, yeah. yeah okay check the oil everything like that yeah. and uh Hopefully, turn it over. And I've ch I just checked the um, I just checked the the water. It's the expansion tank's full. Oh wow! Look, yeah, it's still full. Yeah. Okay, so I reckon all of those, all of the electrical contacts in there, and obviously the the points uh, in there, all need um, cleaning up, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a bit of a electrical cleaner or something like that. Oh yeah, WD forty. Yep, yeah, great. Contact but not cleaner. not yeah, not just normal WD forty. Yeah. Actual contact. I didn't, I didn't know they did contact cleaner. You do now. Yeah. You've got the amazing job of cleaning all of that up. <laughs> What's weird about this car is the closer you look at it, actually, if you were looking at it as a potential buyer, first impressions are not great. But then you keep looking, and I'm looking around the in inner wings and down there to the chassis legs. They actually look pretty good. Does it just seems to be the external that's... Uh, that's yeah. You know, a bit suspect on it, but as you say, internally it's uh, wings and outer sills. Really solid, yeah. Yeah. Wings, outer sills, and then the lower rear corners. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. That is good. Like that's still a bit of gold colour there, isn't it? That's, yeah, that is really yeah, good. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Oh dear, I don't like that. No. We've just taken off this um, this transistor which is bolted into the inner wing. 
uh, which was smoking the last time the car tried to be turned over by Gore. As Tony's kind of gone, it looks like there's a lot of bits of metal in it, which is not great because we don't know what it should look like because we haven't got another one for reference. I think this is just... Is it a heat sink? Just a big I sink? I think it is, yeah. And I think this has just been a lot of dirt and that's probably what's been smoking. Is yeah. That wire will be getting hot, yeah. you know, with it being a resistor. Mm -hmm. And just all this crud that's in there yeah. has created the smoking. We need to blast all that. Yeah, so to say, clean that out, make sure it's got a good connection either side. And yeah. So I've just been having a go at um, just scraping out the crud from the back of this um, transistor and then contact cleaning it. And it's come up really, really well. There's no break in this spring at the back. The contacts are all where they should be, which leads me to believe, shall I say Tony to believe, that I think it's just debris that's got it's in there. It's got hot with it. You know, with that, that resistor yeah. wire in the back, current's been flowing through that. The crud and the dust yeah. and the dirt has just got hot and, and started then, to smoke. It. As you've been cranking it, it's just got, it started baking it, which, you know, like hot burning dust, that kind of weird smell. And I reckon the actual unit is okay. Go on. And Tony's just taken the first plug out. And again, it looks in really good nick. We have got a spare set of new plugs in case. But given these a quick clean and they're, they're bob on. Yep, yep. So again, the condition of that, the condition of the... Um, the carburetors look The carburetors look really yeah. good and we're obviously gonna bypass the main fuel system anyway, but that's promising, really promising. Yeah, anyway, uh, it's lunchtime, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we'll spray some of this WD-40 down the bores. Just let that soak while we carry on. Do you like the metal proboscis? I was just going to say, that's... Uh, it's really good, isn't makes it? Makes it far easier than that straw that used to fly off every time you touched it. We, we're going to try and hand turn it with the plugs out, aren't we, first? Yeah. Just to be sure. That all looks good. Doesn't it? Looks very promising. Are you quietly excited? Um, a bit more now, yeah. <laughs> you uh, you get this thing running. Yeah, I'll buy you in excess of half a pint of German lager. That sounds like a deal to me. In excess. Key in. And are we see if we get lights. Yeah. Oh, something clicked. That we got a click over there, and we've oh, got got a bit of smoke from here. Oh really? Yeah. Can we turn it off? Yeah, turn it off. Okay. Big smoke. That resistor was shining red hot. Red hot? Yep. The job of that resistor, or transistor, is to reduce the, the voltage going to the points. We might have to go to the Haynes manual, mm -hmm. do we think? Which just happens to be on the shelf there. The interior, the condition of the interior is really good. Headliner's good. Dash, this is, this is real wood veneer. Oh, it's real wood. It is cracked along that edge there before you go into this massive parcel shelf. But the door cards and the seats, this seat has a, a bit of a, a rip here. The rest of the seats, the three other seats, amazing. But look at the auto shifter. A lot of old fashioned gear shifters um, are quite chunky. This is so dainty. And weirdly, I don't know if, if this is rare or not, Tony, but it's got manual front windows, manual winding front windows. With, so the, so the, the electric window buttons are blanked off here, but the rear windows here and here on this car are electric. So those quarter windows, they go down and then they kick back. I guess that would allow you to go for that whole pillarless look as the driver without needing somebody in the back to wind them down. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's exactly what it is. And uh, I guess there would have been a radio here. There's just wires. This would have had the radio here on this kind of like yacht decking. Yeah, it's probably a no, blow punked radio. I think that's what these used to Yeah, be. what a mega steering wheel. And Gore's, Gore's taken the carpets, the original mats out, which are in the boot. 
obviously as part of that rust inspection which you can see the two so they have removable bungs. yeah so there's a bung in there when the cars are originally in manufacture and they're filled with you know the, the fluid the paint whatever yeah those bungs are out so it allows the the shells to drain all the fluid to drain out right in manufacturing when they're being painted etc and then they put a bung and then in. they put the bungs in so that's a notorious area to go around there but actually, it, it, the rust is just it's around It's just located to that, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty, pretty good. The rest of the floors are good. And it's the same, I don't know if the camera can see here, but it's sort of rotted to the edge of that toe board, foot floorboard, and around the bunghole, but inboard of that, and actually the inner sill is good. And this is the sort of thing that's really crucial to the kind of the potential survival of a rare car like this. Just notice the inner door handle. You clench it like that. That's great. Ashtrays on every door. Because you right next to the smoker window. Remember, this is the 60s. You shut your door. You spark up your cig using your, your cigarette lighter, which is near the shifter. And then you, you open this up, tap the ash in there, and drive along like so. Or you just have all the windows down anyway, like I said. Right, ign ignition on. Right, all the lights are still on as were. You've disconnected that now. Yeah. So, shall I see if it yeah, turns? Yeah, let's see if it'll turn over. Great. Yeah? It sounded free, didn't it? Well, very free. Just want to point out that we've, we've just had lunch. We broke for lunch. I've taken the fleece off because it's frankly far too hot. And we've had a really nice um, takeaway lunch from the chemist in, in Saundersfoot. They gave us a free lunch, so I am, I am going to promote them for that. It was, it was nice, lovely. It was yeah, lovely. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, now that we've got that important stuff out of the way, on to even more important stuff. You think you've worked out an issue with that resistor? Yeah, so the resistor was glowing red as soon as the key was turned on. Yeah. Um, checking, there was a hinge manual that we had, so checking that the wiring from the um the distributor yeah should have gone to terminal one and it was on terminal 15. so we've swapped that over and we've also had a look at some photographs that gore had taken back in 2016 and we can almost see that that wire was going over at the right hand side so we think what's happened is at some point go has knocked this wire off and just plugged it into the other terminal so right. fingers crossed so now when you turn the key on it doesn't glow <laughs> good so we don't know whether it's going to start but at least it doesn't glow red hot so well that but that theory yeah i mean it, really see, it's it's uh, it's reinforced with the wire and diagram yeah. there so so you've you've done that we've cleaned all of yeah, um points all set and cleaned yeah. we've cleaned the plugs and we've checked them and put them back they're in. all back in yep. bores are lubed yeah Engine you, turns over. You've taken the the, um, the fuel lead off, fuel hose, sorry, off here. So we're going to introduce your can of hope yep. to here, which is where the mechanical fuel pump is. Distributes the fuel to the twin carbs. We'll put a little bit of fuel down its neck first, just a bit. And and you've put your battery on, and yes, we can always piggyback that if yep. we need to or something. Apart from that, are we missing anything? No, we're good to go. I've got fresh E5 fuel in the can of hope yeah fresh from last night yes fresh from last night because <laughs> i drove here in a caterham going because we're going to another late break show shoot after this and the caterham has a, is a brand new car but it has a little bit of a fibby fuel gauge so half a, half a tank allegedly down i was i was weeing in a lay-by and the engine died and it wouldn't restart and then i was i, I was in a state of distress because I thought there's no one around I'm in the middle of nowhere and then I realized in the footwell with my bags and everything was the can of hope with a little bit of fresh petrol in it so I put some in and then it got me here interesting story this is the the new can of hope mark two yeah so what I've done on this one we've introduced a second fuel pump so I've got a low pressure fuel pump for carburetor cars like this one and a high pressure fuel pump for fuel injector cars as previously Put it together in a Y piece connector with two non-return valves just to try and keep it simple. So you've got, you know, a hose out and a hose in and yeah. a return uh, lane if you need it. Yeah. And then on here, you've just got a switch to switch between carburetor, fuel injection. Yeah. 
and the pressure gauges we had before. And it's a bigger capacity? Yeah, 10 litres, yes. Sweet. So we've connected the can of Hope up. We've just given a quick squirt of lube to the, um, the throttle linkages. Uh, and they're all they're all really nice and smooth. So we think we are ready now to turn it over and see if it will fire up. Yeah, right, you can hear the fuel pump and the can of hopes on, ignition's on. Are we ready to fire? Yeah, go for it. No way! No way! No way! <laughs> that is not fake. I cannot believe how easily that just that's ridiculous! Wow! Oh, That's that so impressive! Nice. Oh, it smells beautiful! Yeah, oh yeah! Go on, Tony! Wow! Can't believe it. Cannot believe that. Smells nice back there. That that wasn't even. That was no effort at all. Oh, well done. Can of hope. Yeah. Do you want to kill it for the smoke there? Yeah. Well. It's just getting a bit smoky. Turn it off. <laughs> Shiver me timbers. Right, well, we know it runs. So we've reattached the can of hope outside. Tony's in the driving seat. We're gonna strike it up. We know the brakes are seized, but we don't know how seized. We'll put it into drive and we'll see if it drives out. But then we need to try and stop it. Have you got any pedal? Yeah, there is a bit of, bit of pressure on the is pedal. There? Yeah, and I think the handbrake might work, so. Cannot believe this. It's on the button. I cannot believe this. Is the brakes working? They're not, no. Wow. Oh, well done, oh my God. That's amazing. It starts running away. I start, I can't, I still can't believe how quickly it just spring, up, yeah. it springs into life. Yeah. It's bonkers. I, honestly, the, the, we were expecting the car to be worse when you said, you know, it is quite rusty. It is very rusty. But it's it honestly, it, honestly, it's not that bad. But they are known as a rust bucket, aren't they? Yeah, they it's, are. The E9 is known as a, yeah. as a rust bucket. Yeah. And I think it's done pretty well. It's done, I think you kind of squirreling it away and kind of not quite having the time in your life to do it has almost saved its life. I totally agree. Yeah. Yes, I'd say that's exactly right. I was going to ask about the mileage. Yes. Zero, 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 38. Yes. So I remember having a, a tremendous fun actually driving and watching it 9999 and going round. Oh, right. Yes. Uh, yeah, so. so you must have bought it just before 100,000 miles. Yes, not, not much before that. I only, as I say, I only, had, I only drove it a few months and then the MOT, maybe six months on okay. the road. That's why I had it. So you had maybe, it for... Maybe less, maybe three months. You drove it for such a short period of time. Yeah. But yet you remember it. I fell it. in love with it the, the minute I saw it. Yeah. I knew that you'd kept the original um, carpets. These are all the mats in the front, yeah. And, and, and they're all good. They're all still good. They're okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. These, these are the finishes on the sills. I believe they are. And these are... And that, I'm sure these are parts of it as well. Yeah. It's such a long time ago. I mean, I took them off 35 years ago. <laughs> so... I think it is a miraculous survivor. I think it's done well. Miraculous. Yeah. There's the radio. There's the old blue spot. Okay, so that's the one that's missing inside the car. I believe that's the radio that came with the car. Yeah. The little blue spot. Brake pads. Yeah. Because we know that it's going to need brakes. 
And did you buy it with a head in it, and spare head in the boot? The head came with it, the spare head came with it, because they are renowned for um, the heads, I think because they're aluminium, is it? But they're renowned that the heads do blow on, on yeah. these cars if you drive them too hard. Yeah. All this is matching. Yeah, I know. They have added that on no. specially, so it's definitely part of the car. The only bit that's missing, I believe, is the, is the toolbox area. Do you mind if I lift up those carpets and have a, have a look at the... Let's have a look. No barn fine cars ha have good carpets. <laughs> It's made of the same vinyl. Yes, it has to be original, there's no doubt. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's the original jack. Yeah, and the spare wheel, of course. So we've had a look in the, the boot, boot area here. The, the, the spare wheel well is surprisingly solid for one of these. Just a bit of corrosion where, again, that drain bung is. All of the vinyl and all the false floors and a little organizer. Everything's there. It's really good. The only thing that's missing is that toolkit. But um, everything's in really good condition, all things considered. And that colour. I, yeah. I don't get bored I'm of the colour. You can't, you'll never get Colorado. bored of it. It is amazing colour. Well, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? It was. I still cannot believe how quickly it struck up. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, you, it was just such a sweet engine. Yeah. Yeah. So was it worth nine hours It was, drive? yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. And to see the smile on Gore's face as well, was, yeah. yeah, that was worth it alone. I know, I'm really, I'm really quite taken by the car. I knew it was a gorgeous thing anyway, but I'm just quite taken by the sort of honesty of it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, this, despite the sort of frilly round the edges look of it, it's, it's a really solid car underneath. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely needs to be saved. It does, it, yeah. and I hope Gore kind of uses this as a bit of a catalyst, really to get this back on the road, even if it's not fully restored, if it's just sort of made good, as it were. I need to say a big thank you to Gore, but also Gore's friend Dave, because Dave is the one that contacted the show. And without Dave, I would never have known that this car existed in here. So if you know of any cars that are interesting, that are in garages, real barns, on people's lawns, wherever, there is a link in the description, there's an email address, Get in touch and tell us what you found and whether there's an interesting backstory. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Thank you.